Surely there must be something involving children. Employee would keep watch while four groups of 20 children take alternating recesses. A playground supervisor. Pays 310 an hour. No thanks. When it comes to babysitters, I'm used to doing the hiring. How many children do you have? Just one. He's staying with my parents in Nebraska until I get settled. Then I'll need babysitters again. I'll loan you my list. I have an eight-year-old daughter who goes through babysitters like Sherman through Georgia. How do you manage? Day by day. How's your typing? I wish I could say I don't type at all. Truth is, I used to be pretty fast. I'm awfully rusty, though. Look, I know you're not going to want to hear this, but my advice is you polish up your office skills and take temporary assignments until we can find something better for your talents. Pay for office work is OK, and the hours are flexible. You know any place I can hawk a teaching credential for a typewriter? No, but I'll give you the name of a place where you can rent one. Now look, you take this home, you practice, and you call us when you're ready. And all the time you're practicing and during all your assignments, you keep telling yourself this is temporary, that you're moving on to something better, you're preparing for bigger things. right about being here, Inez. I should drop the choir altogether. You need some time of your own. Don't deny yourself something you've always enjoyed. You can't spend all your time at the hospital. So, How nice you made it. <laughs> well, I didn't have anything else planned. With no TV. Well, have you found a job yet? I may have to give up on the teaching job. But I'll hit the pavement again tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry. Zoe Jensen, meet Muriel Moore. Muriel, 
Zoe just moved into the apartment below me, all the way from Omaha. Oh, how do you do? Hi. Are you married or still one of us girls? <laughs> no, I'm divorced. I got the papers this week. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't be. I'm beginning to enjoy being on my own again. Well, I don't know how good the pickings will be here. You know, San Francisco. But there is a new conductor. I was telling Zoe that this morning. None of us have seen him yet, but he does have an interesting name. Really? Uh-huh. Ephraim Adams. I won't try to list for you all the landmarks of his career. Let me just say that he's had a great deal of experience in music of all kinds. He was supposed to have been retired as of this last year, but like so many of our senior citizens, he didn't relish the idea of inactivity, and so he has chosen to work with us. No one is expecting miracles, but I, I'm sure we'll have a more enjoyable year ahead for all of us. And now I would like to introduce you to your new choir master, Mr. Ephraim Adams. Thank you, Reverend Lowe. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the choir, I don't want to take up valuable time tonight with a lengthy speech, but I do feel an obligation to put our relationship on as frank a basis as possible. Just as the Reverend Lohman was called to his vocation, I was called to mine, which happens to be music. I view music not as a recreation, nor as a competitive sport, nor as a social activity, nor even as a religious duty. Music is a craft. A craft that takes hard work and perseverance and rewards us accordingly. Your minister has said that he does not expect miracles. I do. I fully intend to make something out of the cacophony heard last Sunday. It is conceivable that we may even achieve the status of a choir. Whether or not we do that in the next few weeks depends upon every one of us. In addition to the regular Sunday services, we will give a special Christmas performance, Handel's Messiah. Chosen Handel's Messiah precisely because it is difficult and worthy of the effort we intend to make. Now, those of you who wish to take part in that performance are invited to stay. For those who are seeking a more relaxing pastime, I urge you to leave now and make your way to the nearest hot. Top. <laughs> Although I understand we have some new members, 19 voices will not do justice to Mr. Handel's great work. We need to build this choir in clear as well as quality. And now I would like to introduce our new organist, a former student of mine who knows my peculiarities and has a few of his own. Mr. Seth Rubin.
morning. From your boy? Yes, I guess he made this at school. He must be awfully sweet. He is. I'm going to bring him out here as soon as I can afford to. Did you get to meet everyone last night? Well, not everyone. I meant to introduce you to Henry. Who? Henry Crisp. He's Danish, like you. And a bachelor. Inez, I am not Muriel Moore. Now, now, dear. Nobody said you were. Working temp must be a real drag. It can be tiresome. How about an early lunch? Would that pick you up? I brought a sandwich. Thanks anyway. See you in an hour. Robbie, I miss you an awful lot, but I gotta talk to Grandma now. Give yourself a nice big kiss right on the forehead. But how can I kiss myself on the forehead? <laughs> Stand, Stand on, on a, a chair. chair. I love you, honey. I love you too, Mom. Okay, here's Grandma. So, how are you? I've been so worried. Mom, I said I couldn't call too often. It's expensive. Well, call Collect, dear. Well, I can afford this one. You mean you found a job? I'm not teaching. I have a temporary office job. There are no teaching jobs in this area. Oh, so? Mother. Honey, I just want what's best for you. It's hard knowing your daughter's alone without a proper job, without a husband, in a street. Mom, I'll be fine. Why, right at this very moment, I'm in the company of a rather handsome fellow with a devastating smile. Oh? What's his name? I think it's Jack. You did say your name was Jack, didn't you? What? Oh, stop it. No, what's going on? <laughs> Look, Mom, I'm neglecting him. I've got to go now. Kiss Robbie for me. I will. And now be careful, though. Right, Mom. Bye. Goodbye, dear. Angeline Burns. Do you remember? I phoned you on Monday about my experience. Well, a, a long time ago, I used to sing with this choir, but it became so, you know, so discouraging. So I uh, decided to look for something more challenging for me, you know, a light opera, a civic light opera, and uh, concerts uh, here and there with friends and so forth. But I've heard such wonderful things about your work that I decided to uh, come back and give it another try. That is very kind of you, and I hope you won't be disappointed. We're about to begin, so if you want to hang your coat up and take a seat, I'll be with you in a moment. Hartley Wood, reporting for duty. And there, you decided to accept my offer, Mr. Wood. If you'll just take a chair. Ah, uh, no thanks. I think the church needs it more than I do. I wouldn't mind sitting down, though. Third row, please. It's me. gentlemen of the chorus. May I caution you against taking this text quite so literally. We have turned everyone to his own way. It does not give you license to become a conglomeration of soloists. And we like sheep have gone astray. It does not mean that you need to illustrate it by wandering from the key in which we happen to be singing. And now, before we adjourn, I have an announcement. The first half of next week's rehearsal will be devoted 
to auditions for the four solo parts. Uh, do we have to audition in front of the whole choir? I mean, last year we could audition privately. If you wish to perform Handel's Messiah privately in your closet or bathtub, you may audition privately. Otherwise, your audition is intended to reflect not only how you sing, but how you sing under pressure. And the pressure in this room, I assure you, will not be as great as in church with 400 people present. She really has a beautiful voice. Did you hear her do that last piece? Can't help but hear it. I can hear you only because I sit so close to you, but your voice is really lovely. Amazing. You should try out too. It doesn't hurt. No, I don't think so. I, Nez Pfeiffer. I was surprised to see you here after all these years. I love the choir. Doesn't seem like a long time to me. Well, I think it's wonderful the way you keep going, in spite of everything. Hi. Muriel. Doing anything? Uh, well, I was just came. Oh, what a cute apartment. Oh, <laughs> only temporary until I can afford something bigger. Oh, but it has possibilities. It really does. I just love to help people decorate places. Well, I don't want to spend too much money on this place. Or it doesn't have to cost very much. I go to garage sales and I find just precious things for nothing. Well, I don't want to get too encumbered. Paring down, you know. Oh, I think that is so wise. I think we should all do that, don't you? Yes, we should. Would you like some coffee? We don't have time. We're going to have a girl's night out. Look, I can't... No, 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 please. This is my treat. I brought my math money. I think that man is watching us. What man? Over there by the telephone. I doubt it, Muriel. Probably just waiting for Sage to come out to his job. I don't know. He had that look in his eyes. I was just very embarrassed. Now, what can I get you tonight? Uh, I'll have Tom Collins, please. Oh, let's see. <laughs> I want something special. Do you have anything that comes in a pineapple? Was that okay to bring my drink in here? Oh, sure. Lots of people do that. I don't know. I got some funny looks. But I don't care what anyone says. It's my drink, and I'm going to finish it. Good for you. You know, if we hurry, we can catch a movie after this. Oh, Muriel, I'm going to go home and collapse for the night as soon as I've conquered my shrimp salad. But if you want to go to the movies, please go on without me. I wouldn't think of it. This is our night out. <laughs> How could I forget? Morning. Yeah, it is. Is everything all right, Wendell? You seem preoccupied during the service. I was uh, off key. <laughs> no, you are always on key. It drives me crazy. Can't you goof up once in a while like the rest of us? No, I can't. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude. It's just. If you want to be alone, I understand. Lord, there, is it Sunday already? Yeah, and the Oreos come out to play. Just keep walking, man. Ooh, you hear that, man? The dude must be bad. Bad? The dude may be bad, but his dress is strictly off the rack. <laughs> You've not seen a choir robe before? Hey, this dude got the same tailor, but he talked kind of funny. No, see, he, the organ grinder, this here is the monkey. Come on! Perhaps a 
better move on. Move on! We'll be back, man. We'll be back. Move it! exams this week. What is that you're drinking? Coffee, Granny, just coffee. Can I make you some breakfast? Winter, you get yourself back to books. I take care of the kitchen. You take care of the kitchen, you take care of the cleaning, the money making, all I do is study. Well, that's the hardest work of all. So what you carrying on about? No, Grandma, if I, if I could switch to night school, get a full-time job, we'd have more money and we'd both be happier. Listen, I'll be happy when your schooling's finished and you get yourself a job that means something. Now, why are you going to make me wait four years for that when you can do it in two? Because I want to help you now, Grandma. You're 70 years old. Cleaning offices all night is hard on you. Why should you have to work so hard for me, huh? You all I got, Wendell. I'll do as much for you as I want. The trumpet shall sound And the dead shall be raised And the dead shall be Thank you, Mr. Quist. You may resume your position. Thank you. Any other candidates for the bass solo? Mr. Wood, would you care to solo? Well, I gave it up for Lent, <laughs> Mr. Adams. I think we are well past Lent for this year. And I'm well past singing solos. I'm not past everything, however. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Burns. Any other soprano solo candidates? This is Kim. Step over here, please. This is Kim. You have your selection. Number 45, sir. Proceed.
Oh, sorry. I, I just wanted to say how sweet I think your voice is. Thank you. I've heard of so few singers among your people. We do a variety of things. Well, you keep up the good work. With training, I think you show real promise. What's he doing in bed? He's being disciplined, though. He came home two hours late yesterday. Maybe he had a good reason. The reason is his mother's a thousand miles away, and he thinks no one cares what he does. Are you coming home for Thanksgiving? I can't afford to. You know that. I wish. I'm in the third office this week. Choir makes up for it, though. We had solo auditions last night. Oh, did you get one? I didn't try for one. You could get a solo in Omaha. I don't want one, Mother. And we need teachers, too. Why, I heard just this last week that the school board has decided that... I'm in San Francisco, and I'm staying. It's time you accepted that. Well, I can't accept it. There you are all by yourself, without a decent job, without a husband, without a proper place to live. I don't know, so I just don't know. Are you listening? Couldn't get used to the idea of a Christmas without snow either. We transferred here from East Lansing. Matt wanted to take on the challenge of an inner-city church. Do you have any children? Just one, Terry. He's 17. He came today to lend a hand. He's so helpful. As soon as Matt mentioned the choir needed more members, Terry offered to join. Is he improving at all? I don't know. It's so, so complicated now. We're praying for you. I'm praying, too. Muriel just acquired another piece for her hope chest. Good heavens. What was it this time? A fork, I think. I just have to get a husband for that woman. I don't think the church can withstand her being single much longer. <laughs> All right, people, people. We want to get some pictures of the bride and my handsome new son-in-law. Jerome has his new camera. Okay. Now, let's see. First of all, I want to get Reverend Bowman and his lovely family up here with Jackie and Bob. Oh, Reverend Bowman, please. Alice, you come over and get here with your husband. Now, let's see. Where's Terry? Terry? Terry. Oh, Terry, come on. Come on. Jackie, scrunch in closer to Bob. You just married him, after all. Glad you decided to come on the hike. The Danes got to stick together. Is it uphill or downhill? A little of both. I only go on downhill hikes. Then maybe I could uh, find. Just kidding. How'd you find this place, Henry? Well, friends, it started by a German hiking club. My grandmother was German. The only one among all those Danes. And you still don't like the sauerkraut? Not when I have five miles to climb. Uphill. <laughs> Yeah. 
kettle, tea kettle? Yeah. The coffee stuff's on the counter next to the stove. I see it. How do the feet feel now? I don't know. Dead dogs don't talk. What? It's an old Nebraska saying. Dead dogs don't talk. Oh. Well, you should have told me about that sooner, you know. I mean, I always carry the first aid kit in case of blisters. Now, ah, here. I'll put a sock. Um, all right, I can do it. I'm sorry, so I didn't mean... Wow, these sweat socks sure earned their name today. Oh, Henry. <laughs> Henry, uh, this just doesn't seem to be working out too well. Can I just be alone now, please? showering praise impetuously or without reason. Nevertheless, that was a distinct improvement. We shall return to that part of the score later. Before we go on to the next section, there are some announcements to be made. It is never easy to choose one person over another, especially when the factors of Talent and experience can be so vastly different. Nevertheless, music and life require such choices. The bass soloist for the Messiah will be Mr. Garner. The alto solos are the responsibility of Miss McGuire. Tenor solos sung by Mr. Jefferson. And the soprano solos by Mrs. Kim. Are there any questions? Very well. If you will please turn to section 28 in your score. Mr. Rubin will give us a starting chord. solo in this section. There are no solos for anyone. 
I'm not sure, Mr. Adams. You'd know a soloist if you heard one. I know an ego when I hear one. You have a very impressive voice, Mrs. Burns. There's no denying that. But it is what I think of as an operatic voice. One not easily suited to music sung by a group. A group of amateurs? Who can't even sing on key? Mrs. Burns is right, of course. You are amateurs. Unlike certain pseudo-professionals like myself who insist on slave wages. Your voluntary and steadfast attendance at these rehearsals fully qualifies you for any definition of the word amateur. What Mrs. Burns and many others are wrong about is the meaning of the word, which has to do with motivation, not quality. You will remember amo, amas, amat, the Latin verb to love. The meaning of amateur is he or she who does a thing for the love of it. There is no higher reason for singing than the love of doing it. And in that respect, you do indeed qualify as amateurs. And I salute you for it. Now, shall we get on? Mr. Adams? Yep. Taken before the war. How did you two meet? Long Charmin Strike, 1934. Which side was he on? Uh, smack in the middle. He was reporting it for a newspaper. Ephraim saved my life during that strike. How? Well, he uh, sort of distracted a goon who was trying to finish me off with a baseball bat. <laughs> and you didn't invite him today? Oh, I quit inviting him any place years ago. He's a loner. I think he likes it that way. Good, watch your step, man. Okay. It's right on here. Welcome aboard, Mrs. Curtis. I'm Hartley Wood, the captain of this rig. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Here, let me give you a hand. How you doing, Harley? Hello. There you go. Uh. Is it ready? gets any more ready, it'll fall apart. Can we eat? Not until we're all here. Well, can we let it sit for a bit, then? Good. Just don't let it get too cool. Oh, there's still plenty of heat in this whole carcass. No way to talk about yourself, Hartley. Yeah. Hey, everybody, uh, Henry's here. Now we can eat, huh? Hello, Henry. Happy Thanksgiving. The same to you, so. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Okay, everybody, find your places. I can close them. This is two. Two of the most wonderful turkey cookers I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> How can we get you to join the choir? Wendell tells us you have a wonderful voice. Oh, did that boy say that? <laughs> well, I always did like to sing in church, but I work nights. 
Besides, where I grew up, we didn't read the music, you know. <laughs> you folks read your music, don't you? Well, some of them do. Some of us just make a stab at it. <laughs> what denomination you belong to, Mr. Wolf? I belong to the Church of Beautiful Women. I am a recent convert. <laughs> uh, now, teach us some songs that we don't have to read. Well, um, I don't know. Maybe there's some hymns we both know. Then we can teach them to these heathens. <laughs> what a fellowship, what a joy divine. you tenors for paying attention. It's a great relief for me to know that I'm waving my arms here, not simply to ventilate the place. That is the seventh time we have tried that section. There's no point in finishing it unless we can get it right. So I am going back to the beginning, including the solo. And this time I want to hear your voices, all your voices. Moore. What? Would you please give me the text of measures 43 to 48? Okay. Um, was that, um, was that, was that before or after the, uh, the cities of Judah? Measures 43 to 48. Well, um, Mr. Adams, I don't, I, um, I don't seem to have those numbers on my score. Why not? Well, I know you told us to uh, measure, to number all the measures, but um, I don't... Um, numbers and music don't seem to go together for me. Music is fraught with numbers. Rhythms are numerical relationships, and measures need to be numbered if we are to have some common reference to find our way through this piece of music. I suggest that you number your score find a choir that is less demanding. Now, Mr. Goodman, would you please read me the text that measures 43 to 48? L lift up thy voices with strength. Lift them up. Be not afraid. Again, please. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Be not afraid! Now, all of you, not just Miss Moore and Mr. Goodman, lift up thy voices with strength. 
Are you here to sing? To swallow your words and hold back and mouth your way through a great piece of music? Well, it's a waste of time. Yours and mine. We have four weeks. Four weeks. Three? Yes. My daughter's 12 now. Time she got some culture. <laughs> Thanks. The church could use a full house. Miss Fairchild and Marchetti, good morning. Yes, this month. I know it's been bad before, but this, this is a lot worse. Can you get another loan? I don't know. To get a new treasure just to sort this thing out. I wonder if we could cut down on the maintenance expense. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes, Terry? Could I borrow the car Wednesday night? Because uh, some of the kids are going to the beach for a cookout, and I said that maybe I could drive. Sounds fine to me. Matt? Is that the day you volunteered to drive for the senior citizens home? Yeah. Uh... Well, Matt, maybe... No, no well, never mind. I'll just tell him some other time. Sure. We'll help you plan it. You know, one thing we could use is some more fundraising. <laughs> Much better. Next week we'll go into part two and hope the improvement continues. In the meantime, I want you all to work on your vocal exercises. So thank you very much. See you next week at our usual time. Mrs. Pfeiffer, can I speak with you downstairs, please? Thank you for coming down. I want to thank you also for that jar of marmalade. I did not think it appropriate to mention it in front of the entire choir, but I, I did appreciate it. I gave them to several people. The recipe makes a big batch. What did you want to talk about? Well, I want to discuss several things. You've been a member of this choir for a long time. So I think you understand what this choir means to the church. And I hope you understand what I'm trying to do here. Yes, I understand all of that. Good. Uh, I think you also understand that in any group endeavor, the ultimate consideration has to be what is best for the group and for the goals of that group. You want me to drop out of the choir, don't you? Mr. Adams, I'm 72 years old. I know my voice is not what it was when I was 20. I just wanted to sing as long as I could, as long as it was acceptable. If it's not, that's your decision. You have every right to make that decision. It is my responsibility to make that decision. And it's not easy. I know. And I appreciate how you're changing this choir. I really do. And I don't want to stand in the way of that. 
But I can't stop coming here. Giving up all this would be like dying. What can we do? I've thought of something. I think you need an assistant. There are so many things that need to be done. People in the choir keep losing parts of their score. There's a lot of organization needed. I can run a copy machine, and I'm good at notation, at least on paper. Also, the robes need a good overhaul before Christmas. They're in terrible shape. I don't think you've noticed how they're falling apart, have you? No, I haven't. Well, I have. We are going to make this not only the best sounding choir this church has ever had, but also the best looking one and the most organized. I appreciate what you've tried to say, Mr. Adams. I really do. But I hope you never have to be told to stop doing something you love as much as this. I don't know if you could take it. I'm so sorry. I thought the treatments were going so well. They lied. The treatments just prolonged his pain. I don't think they lied, Cora. I'm sure they did the best they could. Doctors are not infallible. Matt, what do I tell the children? Sometimes God's reasons are difficult to fathom. Now, do I tell that to this six-year-old? What do I say? Maybe I better drive you home. What are you, God's taxi cool. service? I want to know why the boy died. Ask God why a beautiful man dies in the prime of life. Maybe I better take you someplace where you won't be disturbing oh, others. Oh, am I right? disturbing others? Sure. But I'm disturbed. My husband just died. People die in this place. Does that disturb you? It disturbs me. I want to know what I'm doing. I to know what
even if we spend the $5,000 now, we've got to follow it up with another 10 to get the thing in tip-top shape. I'm just wondering, gentlemen, if this may not be the best time to write off this organ and use the insurance money to make a better investment. Such as? An electronic organ. I own a piece of an ice skating rink, and we just put in one there for $6,000. Sounds great. $6,000. Complete. Complete. Now, we may need a bigger model here, but for twelve to fifteen thousand, you can get the top of the line. The maintenance is nothing. All solid state. Ephraim? Seth, what do you think about that? I think that to write off this noble instrument is criminal. You'd be surprised by what they can do with electronics these days. I know what an electronic organ can do, but I know what it cannot do. At least this side of your heavenly gates, Reverend Lowen. No substitute for the sound of a pipe organ. Seth, are you totally opposed to this as well? No, not totally. I mean, I have heard some very... But they're not quite the same. If we could get this organ repaired... Gentlemen, I did not finish my report. The problem is not only money, it is time. There are only three companies who do this kind of work, and none of them can get to it before February. What about an out-of-town company? the worst time of year. Every church who can afford it schedules the servicing before Christmas. On the electronic, we can get a free trial demo. No obligation for two months. Looks like we have very few choices. Very. Please, no applause are going all day. What do you think? Uh, <clears throat> well, Mr. Loop, the volume is certainly impressive, but the choice... That was only 60% of max output from these amps. This model can blow your roof off. What would we do for an encore? Lesson encores, preludes, processionals, funeral stuff. This model can do it all. You've got your string effects, your harpsichord, your brass. Could I uh, try something a little more like the music with you were? Hey, listen, you're the expert. What do I know? Be my guest, Sid. Do you mind if I call you Sid? I think his parents might object. My name is Seth. Seth Rubin. Seth, of course. Here, we got an adjustable bench. Make yourself comfortable and play whatever you want. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The Bible tells us the child was born in utmost simplicity. Shouldn't we at least reflect that simplicity in our celebration? The birth of Christ required no complicated attendance. Why then? Should our celebrations of that birth be attended by such rabid commercialism? Is it really necessary? Is it really necessary in an age when one quarter of the world's population goes to bed hungry? 
consumed the meaningless, disposable products of a civilization steeped in gluttony? Dispatch, can we do that after lunch? <laughs> I had a feeling it was going to be one of those days. <laughs> Matt? Uh-huh? That was one of your better sermons, I must say. Really? Well, if it's going to be that entertaining every Sunday, maybe we should just keep the damn thing. <laughs> that be? Oh, uh, uh, it's all right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll pick him up later. No, I'm sorry. And you don't have to say you're sorry about everything, okay? Yeah. Oh, Reverend, thank God you're home. It wouldn't be right if you heard about it from somebody else first. Heard, heard what? Well, I've been thinking it over in my head a million times, and, and after the fight, well, I, just, I, I felt he must be capable of anything. I, I know I'm right. Right about what? Well, the vandalism. I, I know who broke the organ. I saw him leave the church that night. It was Wendell Curtis. Well, you know, Muriel, you, uh, you could be mistaken. I mean, perhaps if somebody just talked to Wendell, he... No, no, the police are questioning him right now. The police? They told me I acted very responsibly. I have to get down there right now. Sorry about lunch. I'll be back to some things. I got here as soon as I could. Did my grandmama call you? No. No, I... Uh, I heard about it from Muriel. Muriel? You no, know, Muriel is a crazy woman. That woman is crazy, and they believe her. What do you mean? Man, I know she saw me come out of the church that night. But I was practicing, man, just practicing. All I wanted to do was see, like, what my voice would sound like in the church. Yeah. I ain't break nothing. I swear to God, I ain't break nothing. Well, it's gonna be all right. If you're innocent, like you say you are, then you got nothing to worry about. Will he talk to you? Not much. Just want to press charges against him or not? I, I don't even know if he's guilty. That's what jury trials are for. Told me he didn't do it. Hey, they don't get off. What's the good of pressing charges? Have a drone away. Excuse me, are you in charge? That's right. What can I do for you? Uh, I gotta confess something. Terry! Was it like a blackout? I mean, did you know what you were doing? No, it wasn't a blackout. I remember everything. I mean, how it looked and what I did and how it felt. D did it feel good? What do you mean, did it feel good? I mean, whatever you were angry about, did it feel good to get it out? I don't know. Yeah, I, w I was just walking behind the altar. And I saw this vase of flowers, and I felt like knocking it over. So I knocked it over. And then I saw something else, and I hit that. I just kept going, you know. I remember I, I felt just a lot of, a lot of energy, you know. And then I started laughing because something struck me as funny. What was so funny? I don't know. I thought about what people always say about destroying private property, you know. And I wondered whether this was private property or not. I mean, I still don't know. I mean, who does the church belong to? I mean, we live here. We're in it all the time. But does it belong to us? Or does it belong to the congregation? Or does it belong to anybody? Of course it belongs to us. Not like a car or a bank account. But my God, Terry... This is our life's work. 
This church means more to me than anything in the world, and to your mother. Which isn't too bad in there, but several pieces have to be made from scratch. I know this metal. I can work this with my tools. It might look easy, Henry, but it's going to take very precise tolerances. In Denmark, I was apprenticed to a silversmith. But it's going to take more than one person. Well, you've got me. All we need now is a woodworker. Maisie Kim's husband works in a cabinet shop. If he can join us, we might be able to get it back together by Christmas. It'll be a wonderful surprise for Ephraim. My lips are glued. Maybe Terry should be here helping us with this? He's doing volunteer work through a probation officer. Maybe he can't bring himself to come back here. Yeah, that boy's been overchurched anyway. He ought to do his penance somewhere else. second cup of tea and my time's crossword is not good morning. It's the electronic organ. That monstrosity. <laughs> getting used to the police calls.
Hello? So, where have you been? I've been calling all afternoon. I've been out trying to find something for Robbie for Christmas. So, that's what I've been trying to reach you about. We can't find him. What? How long has it been? Well, I put him to bed early last night, but his bed wasn't slept in. All night? Did you call the police? Yes, we talked to everyone. He got very upset the other day and threatened to go to San Francisco. You don't think... Did you check the bus station? Yes, but they don't keep records. You don't suppose he'd hitchhike. Oh, my God, I hope not. Um, well, I don't know what to do. I, I can't come there. He might be on his way here. Oh, I don't know, so. I don't know what more any of us can do. I told you the right address. Right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so worried. Uh, the fare is three fifty, oh, lady. Oh, oh, sure. There you go. Thank you very wow. much. Wow. Oh, this is a neat no, very place. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Robbie, where have you been? Hiding on that dumb bus for two days. Oh. That's where I've been. They only had one bathroom. And you know what? What? That didn't work. Oh, no. I thought I was gonna... <laughs> You thought you were going to what? You know. <laughs> Did you eat anything? You must be starving. Well, I made myself a couple of peanut butter sandwiches. But I think I used them up before Utah. Utah? What did you eat between Utah and California? Oh, I had a hamburger at a place called Reno's. Boy, they have a lot of slot machines there. Hmm. I used up most of my money on the hamburger. But I had a quarter left. And I snuck it and tried it. Oh, Robbie, that was crazy. When you don't have anything left to use it on a slot machine. Well, at least you found out what a jip they are, right? Right. <laughs> you can say for the call to Grandma. <laughs> you to be creative. What should we make for Grandma? We could draw some pictures. That's the start. Why don't we put the pictures on a calendar? Yeah, and we can mark the days that are special. Like what? Like March 19th. <laughs> Look, Smarty Pants, we'll put everybody's birthday on it. Okay, but mine's in red. What can I get Daddy? I don't know, honey. He's always been difficult. I know what I'd like. What? To all be together, like it was. Don't start now, Robbie, okay? How come? Because it's not going to happen. I told you that back home. In Omaha. Daddy said you were the one who wanted a divorce. Daddy, honey. Mommy. He knows very well. You mean Daddy lied to me? We all lied to ourselves. Too long.
So, in addition to Terry's apology to you, and, and mine, the three of us were picked as sort of a committee to come here and tell you uh, that everybody misses you. And that we're all sorry about what happened. And we hope you'll come back with us as soon as you feel like it. It's okay. Uh, you didn't have to bother. Don't bother, Wendell. Something terrible happened. You got caught in the middle. We don't want it to happen to you or anyone else again. We can't play hooky, Wendell. We need all the tennis we can get. Otherwise, the bases will wipe us out. There is a, a dinner plan for the Friday before performance. Potluck. There's lots of good food. Everybody will be there. We'd love to have you, Wendell. Uh, thanks for the invitation. I'll, I'll try and make it. Well, thank you for being so understanding. Take it easy, son. Yeah, I will. Wendell, why aren't you mad? What? Angry. Why aren't you angry? You have every right to be. Uh, it's nothing to be angry about. It was just a mistake. It was more than that, and you know it. We all know it. It was terribly unfair. Zoe, sometimes life is unfair. You can't expect justice all the no, time. No, you can't. But when life is that lousy, when people act that way and we bear the brunt of it, we've every right to hit the ceiling, to hit something, a wall, a door. Do it when we leave. But do it when we get it out. Count. Isn't that what a party's for? To stop counting? <laughs> Normally I'd agree with you. I seem to have lost my appetite. I guess I've got stage fright a day early. Well, my brother's uh, one of your soloists, and uh, he's so nervous he can't stop eating. Your Will's brother? <laughs> yes, but I'm thinking of resigning. And until then, my name's Danny Darden. I'm so Jensen. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Adams, that's very nice of you. But you know what the rules of the gift exchange were. Yes, Mrs. Fife. Yes, I know what the rules of the gift exchange are. I'm also a man who normally sets great store by rules, as you all know. I am also a man who makes great demands on people. And therefore, I'm just trying to find a way to thank you all for your effort and for your devotion to our common goal. If you'll excuse me for being a little out of breath, the bus broke down this evening and I took to the sidewalks forgetting about our San Francisco hills. <laughs> so, if you don't mind, I'd like to sit down. Thank you very much.
Wendell. I want you to know I didn't accuse you of anything. I just told people what I saw. I hope you're not angry with me. I... Maybe you should figure out what you're angry about. You know, Ephraim, these shirts were a nice thought. But uh, it's not that easy to get off the hook. You know, we've been slaving for you long enough now. So before you get your piece of cake, you're going to have to sing for your supper. <laughs> oh, he can sing, you know. He says that he's a bit backward sometimes. Come on up here. <laughs> Now, uh, at least I'm not going to ask him to do a solo. This is a song that he and I sang together many years ago, down in the waterfront. Let's see who remembers it the best, huh? <laughs> All right, Seth. If the river were whiskey and I was a duck, I'd dive to the bottom and never come up. Never come up. Any news? The nurse said the doctor's still with him. Well, we should hear something soon. Now, who wanted cream and sugar? I hope I got it straight. Oh, I'm sure you did. Thank you. Seth, there's one for you. Seth, you can go home if you want to. I can't go home. He's dying. He is not going to die. It may be serious, but I don't think he's going to die. He is. He's dying right now. He's dying and we're out here drinking coffee. Is anyone here a relative of Ephraim Adams? No, oh, Ephraim's all alone. Is it serious? It was a mild stroke. How he recovers is a matter of physical therapy and his own will to improve. Well, if it's only a matter of will, there's nothing to worry about. He's got plenty of that. I talked with his doctor again about noon, and he said he was doing fine, despite the paralysis. I, I think he's a good doctor for Ephraim. He said, uh, when a patient starts ordering the staff around, even on note paper, it's a sure sign of recovery. <laughs> However, the question remains, what do we do about next week? I suppose that the easy thing to do would be to cancel. But I just hate to see all your wonderful work go for nothing. Seth, isn't it possible that somewhere we could find a choir director who was familiar enough with the Messiah to step in? No, uh, I know how individual Ephraim's vision of his music is. It's not something you can just hand over at the last moment to someone else. Since you do know it so well, Seth, wouldn't it be possible for you to conduct? It's true. You're the only one who knows the music as well as Ephraim. No, I, I can't play and conduct a choir. I'll turn pages for you. No, I, I just can't do that kind of thing. I know some people can, but I can't. Then we can't go on with the performance. Can't died in the cornfield. What did you say? Can't died in the cornfield. It's an old Nebraska expression. I just remembered it. Can't died in the cornfield, Seth. That's right, Seth. Can't died in the cornfield. 
Cat died in the cornfield. Cat died in the cornfield. Cat died in the cornfield. Cat died in the cornfield. Cat died in the cornfield. Okay, okay. Cat died in the cornfield. All right. <laughs>